Hi guys, welcome back to another GGF video. Now today we'll take a look at the brand new ASRock Z270 Extreme 4 motherboard. Now this is the board here. As you can see, ASRock has gone with a, a relatively nice black and white color scheme. They've gone with a nice white IO cover. Now some of the main features on this board, this is ASRock's first attempt, or from what I know, of first attempt at RGB lighting. Now they haven't gone overboard. They don't have six or seven multi-zones all over the board. They just got a few. Um, few key areas and they've also included an RGB strip header so we'll cover that a little bit later on. Um, some other thing ASRock are including, they've included the uh, high bandwidth SLI bridge, they've been doing that on a few of their boards and this board I've been told will retail for about 250 Australian dollars. Now to get a two-way high bandwidth SLI bridge is pretty sweet. Uh, they've also got their steel slots, you've seen on a few of their boards only on the PCI Express, not on the uh, DIMM slots. Uh, some other main features, they've got a nice little sound card on board as well. They've also got USB Gen 2, uh, 3.1 Type A and Type C on the rear, which is nice. And for overclocking, we did a bit of testing. We'll cover this later on, but ASRock sent us a 7600K and we were able to hit uh, over five gigahertz with about 30, uh, 30 minutes of overclocking testing. So that was pretty, pretty insane for what we thought, especially on a board at this price. So we'll have a look at that a little bit later on. And also ASRock has sent us the uh, Fatality Z270 Gaming K6. We will be looking at this a little bit later on, probably after when we get back uh, from CES, so probably mid to late January, we'll check out this board. Very similar sort of layout. Uh, it's a different color scheme, uh, black and red, and it's got a few uh, ramped up features as well. Now anyway, we won't spend any more time on this. We'll jump in, we'll see what's in the box, and we'll have a look at the board in more detail. Take a look at the box. We see it's a very clean looking box. We've got the X for the, I can assume for the extreme. Uh, we've also got a handle on the side, which is a nice feature. And then moving on to the back, we've just got some of the main highlights. We can see we've got the uh, lighting effects, which is new, new to ASRock. Also, we've got the steel armor, which isn't new to ASRock, but it's still new. And then we've got the board itself, and then a full list of specs in the bottom. Now let's jump in and see what's inside the box. All right, now taking a look inside the box, we have the ASRock multi-language user manual, as you can see there. Then we've got our driver CD, and we also get a nice little uh, ASRock powered by ASRock case badge, which is nice. We also get this little bit of uh, cardboard. This looks to just be a postcard. I don't know, something something nice they've just thrown in. We also get your software setup. So this is separate to the user manual. So this goes into like BIOS and setting up the software, which is probably to me more important than the, uh, than the user manual, because this has a lot of um, interesting things to do with the software specific to this board. Now getting into the other bits and pieces, we get four black SATA cables. Two are straight through and the two are right angles at one end. Now moving on to the IO shield, we'll look at this a little bit later on when we get the board out, but we can see it's got the same theme going with the board. It's really nice that this isn't just your standard sort of tin, sort of silvery one. They've added the black and they've added the name of each uh, IO port on the back, which is nice. Moving on to these three little bags, these are all the screw down uh, screws to hold your M.2 cards in. Uh, your SSD, so you'll need those to secure those in. And another item I really like what ASRock are doing lately on all their boards, uh, they're supplying a, a two-way SLI bridge, but this isn't any SLI bridge, this is your HB high bandwidth bridge. Now these are the ones where if you're running two 1080s, you normally need to fork out and purchase this card separately from like either Nvidia or a, uh, or a separate vendor, but ASRock are throwing these in, and these can cost up to say uh, 50, $60 for an LED. One, uh, ASRock are throwing in a standard one, which is really nice. And I don't think ASRock are throwing uh, $50 extra onto their boards because their boards are relatively uh, really cheap already. Now, lastly, we have the board, which is inside the uh, any static bag. Now, taking a look at the board, we can see ASRock has gone with a black and white theme and they've really expressed the X from the Xtreme 4. And I'd really like this design. They've also gone with the white plastic IO cover, which also runs down to cover the sand as well. Now this is ASRock's first attempt at RGB onboard lighting. And they've also included an RGB uh, onboard header for your RGB strips as well, which is nice. Now for the lighting zones, we have a few LEDs around the chipset heatsink. We have this little strip here is RGB and also the purity sound cover is RGB as well. We'll have a look at that a little bit later on and we can show you the different modes and how that works with their supplied software as well. Now moving around the board, we'll start with the top left hand corner and move our way clockwise around and we'll just cover some of the main features on this board. Now ASRock has included a M.2 key 
uh, which is support for Wi-Fi modules. And this is sort of down just below the cover. You just can't see that. Now they haven't supplied the Wi-Fi module, but they do have that little slot. If you happen to have one of those from an older board or you do want to sort of pick up one of those later on. Uh, power phases, we have a 12 phase, fa a 12 phase power design uh, with two phases for your memory, 10 for CPU, and they're running 12K caps. Now moving on to probably the most important thing is your CPU support. Now of course it's Z270, we have support for your latest 7th gen processors, for example your brand new uh, 7600K or your 7700Ks, but of course we've got uh, previous support for 6th gen, so you'll be able to run your older 6700s and your 6600s as well if you have those. And moving on to our fan headers, we have five on board all up. We have one over here, you just can't see, have another one here, one on the right, one on the bottom, and one in the middle. Now, I do like these placements, and I think five is just the right amount. And we also have a 1.5 amp pump header up here, which is nice as well. Moving on to DDR support, we have DDR4, four dims, and that runs at a total of 3,866 megahertz plus OC. Now, moving on to some of the uh, I.O., we have your three, uh, sorry, two internal USB 3.0 headers, to there, which is really nice to see because a lot of cases these days are bringing out four USB 3 headers on the front of the cases. So having two, I think is important. Moving down to SATA, we see a total of eight SATA 3. Now it's good that there's no SATA Express. I've never really liked SATA Express. I don't think I've known anyone who's, has, who has used SATA Express. So it's good to see we've scrapped them and we have eight SATA 3. Now moving on to your M.2, you're probably interested in support for those. We have a 110 mil slot down the bottom and we have a standard 80 millimeter slot up the top. Now these are PCIe Gen 3 4x or they also support standard SATA as well. So if you're running an older school uh, SATA M.2, these will work or if you've got a brand new or relatively new uh, PCIe 4x, they will work as well and they are Optane ready. And we also have down for your PCI Express slots, we have the steel slots, which ASRock are calling it. We have these two here. Uh, strangely enough, they've uh, opted to go without steel slots up on your DIM. I do like it when they have your PCI Express and your DIM slots, steel slots, but they've just opted for these two here. For your PCI configuration, you'll get uh, SLI Max for NVIDIA or you'll get three-way Crossfire, only because Crossfire will allow you to run in uh, four by mode. So when you're running three, two cards in here, this bottom slot will run at four by, which will allow you to run um, to allow you to run Crossfire. So if you're running one card, you get 16, two cards, you'll get eight, eight, and three cards, you'll get eight, eight, four. And of course we have three of the PCI Gen 3, a one by slots, one, two, three. Now moving on, I just covered the RGB strip header there. We'll look at that later on. We'll throw this board in a case and see how it looks. And then we have your Realtek ALC1220 sound card, which runs on the Purity Sound 4. Now this is a nice little sound card. You've got 120 decibel uh, DAC, and we've also got a headphone amp as well. And moving on to some of the other features on this board, we've got dual uh, BIOSes, which is nice. You can see there, and it's even got a little BIOS version on there as well. Uh, some of the other connectors, we've got your standard EPS 8 pin, that's in a standard spot. 24 pin is in a standard spot. And down the bottom, we have your USB 2s, your uh, headphone and your uh, front panel connectors there. Now taking a look at the rear IO ports, you can see at the left, you've got those two cutouts for the Wi-Fi card if you do wish to add one. As I said earlier, this board doesn't come with that card. We have our PS2 combo, which will drive either a mouse or keyboard. We have two standard USB 3.0 ports. Now for our video outputs, we have D-Sub. Strangely enough, ASRock has decided to go with D-Sub. Not sure why, they've gone with a DVI-D and we have a HDMI. Now, I couldn't find anywhere what version HDMI, but I managed to reference the resolution max it would do, and it looks like that's HDMI 1.4, which, which will give you 4K at 30 hertz, so that's not too bad. Now, moving over here, we have a USB 3.1 Gen 2. We have a Type A and a Type C, which is nice to have on these boards. We have an Intel i219V gigabit LAN up the top. We have our two standard USB 3.0 ports here, and then we have our five plus one audio jacks, which includes optical. And you can just see at the back there, the little sort of cable that's running the RGB for the uh, IO cover. Now, just take a look at the IO shield. Once it's sort of matched up with the rear IO port, you can see how it sort of matches the rest of the board, which is really nice. Alrighty guys, so just the last few little things I wanna cover with the uh, ASRock Extreme 4 board. Now the BIOS layout, ASRock has gone with a completely new 
themed revamped BIOS. Now these are themed for the different boards you get, like the Fatality K6, the Extreme 4. The themes will be different for each one to suit the boards. Uh, they've also got this new uh, new sort of home area. It's very nicely laid out. You've got like the clock. You've got a lot of sort of basic things for beginners to sort of learn their way around. And they've also got this uh, tools sort of menu. And that's really nice because that's got things like the instant flash, the internet flash. It's also got your system browser, which shows you the board and what's connected. And it's also got uh, fan tuning as well and of course i've got the f6 strangely it's f f6 a lot of other boards are f7 for your advanced mode but azrock has the f6 and you have your advanced for all your overclocking and tweaking another thing i was really impressed with um azrock does this quite a lot is their boot times into windows was just extremely fast um, i couldn't believe it now this was just on a standard sata 3 ssd i wasn't running anything crazy like an nvme for the boot drive just a standard ssd and it was booting really really quick I was really happy with that. Uh, for overclocking, ASRock were nice enough, really great of them to send me a 7600K. And I spent about 20 minutes or so, half an hour, I was blown away that I was able to hit five gigahertz pretty much straight off the bat now. Myself, I wouldn't class myself an, an overclocker. I've done a bit here and there, but I wanted to see how I went testing this board. Now, um, I don't know if I got a cherry pick CPU um, or whether this motherboard is just really crash hot at overclocking uh, CPUs. It's hard to tell because I only had one of each, but I was able to hit uh, five gigahertz. I was able to get a successful 3D Mark uh, Fire Strike and Time Spy done at 4.9. I wanted to keep my volts under 1.4. I was running at 1.39 for the V core. And um, with the test bench set up with a GTX 1070 Founders Edition, my Time Spy, time spy score was 5,710 and the Fire Strike score was 15,058. So that's pretty insane. Uh, we're not running X99 here, uh, we're running Z270 and a standard 1070 video card. Now the only sort of downside is this was temps were quite high. Running nearly 1.4 V-Core, the CPU was cranking up to 75 degrees uh, at low temps. This was running the CPU-Z uh, stress test and it was at 40 degrees idle. Now, this was probably going to be a little bit better in my scenario because I was running on my test bench. Now if you've seen that before, it's a custom pretty much a wet bench with a relatively decent EK 60mm uh, 360 rad on the back. They are great performing rads. So I had the CPU and the video card in the loop. So most normal averages will probably be either using probably an all-in-one cooler or maybe an air cooler, probably going towards an all-in-one. So your temperatures may be a little bit hotter. Um, moving on to something else. Uh, lastly, I want to take a look at the um, ASRock's first attempt at their RGB uh, lighting. Now, I've done a little uh, display rig over here. I'll be doing a separate mod video on that build. I've done a build just around this board in the Inwin uh, 303 case. But um, I just want to go through sort of some of the lighting modes and how this interacts. Now, just bear in mind, this is ASRock's first attempt at RGB. They haven't gone crazy. They haven't gone all over the place. They've kept it kind of subtle. Um, I wasn't expecting it to be as fancy as some of the top 500 plus to $1,000 boards on the market. Um, their software worked good, the Aura app. It did pretty much exactly what it needed to do. Uh, it was live, no needing to hit apply or anything else. As soon as you moved the, uh, the color wheel around, the colors changed. The only area is that didn't quite turn out as good as I would have liked was up where the IO cover is. The colors weren't representing too well to the color wheel. I'm not too sure if it was my board. So all the reds were a bit pinkish and stuff like that. But, um, but apart from that, it worked well. The software worked. So especially for a $250 board, um, I think if you're paying $500 for a board that had RGB built in, you'd want it to be spot on. But I think for $250, um, you can't really go wrong with this ASRock board. It's got everything, as you saw, uh, going over the board. It's got all the features you need. Um, I'll, as I said earlier, I've done a build for this, uh, for this board around it. I'll be covering that in a separate video. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it for this um, for this video. Um, I was really impressed with the overclocking. I'm not sure if I had a stellar CPU or this is a really good board. Like this does have a pretty decent power phase, uh, slightly more than most of your other or your budget boards coming out. So I was impressed with that. Uh, the price is uh, killer for 250 for a brand new release board. So yeah, I just want to thank ASRock for sending this out, sending the CPU to test as well. And I want to thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for next time.